Hello everyone and welcome to Medic Simple. I am Dr. El Sayal. I'm a radiology consultant working in the UK. Today I'm going to take you through another Viva case where we're going to learn from our mistakes so that we avoid doing these mistakes in your real Viva session. Today we're going to explore how one of the candidates has fallen into overcalling things and also how a significant abnormality was underestimated and not fully evaluated. It's important to know that you need to be succinct, straight to the point. This case also will uh, show you how to create logic thinking about the case you are uh, viewing and not to rush into overcall things while you're doing your Viva session. But if you do find it helpful, please make sure that you share the learning so that everyone can benefit from these sessions as I find that feedback is always helpful in correcting our mistakes and correcting our approach to every Viva case in the examination. At the end of this video, I'm going to suggest three different topics that you need to read about so that you maximize the learning of this video. I'm creating these videos to help you pass the Viva examination from the first time and to facilitate that you pass the examination with highest score possible. Please make sure that you are viewing this video on a laptop or on a PC and that all distractions and mobile notification has switched off so that you maximize the learning of this video. Especially that at the end of this video, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate a critical evaluation of the candidate assessment of this case. So make sure you stick to the end of this video and make sure that you read the three topics I'm going to suggest and you learn from this case and share it with all candidates so that you maximize the learning. Right, this is a patient came um, during on call uh, with an abdominal pain. Okay, so um, this is an unenhanced CT KUB scan. I can see right-sided hydronephrosis and um, so there's right, there is bilateral hydronephrosis. I'm uh, checking to see if there's any obstructing calcification. Okay, I cannot see an obstructing cause. However, there does appear to be um, a fluid distended structure between the rectum and bladder. Yeah, around here, if you just stop there. So a few slices up. So there appears to be some distended, uh, a distended lesion there, and I would like to define it further. It appears to be homogeneous, well-defined. Um, I'm trying to, I would, I would like to follow it to make sure it's not a loop of bowel, which would be unusual. So I just want to see if it's connecting to any bowel. And it, it does appear to be connecting to the small bowel. So it, it appears to be fluid, it appears to be distended and thickened. So I'm concerned about the abnormality in the small bowel. So I'd like to look at the small bowel in more detail. So the, the small bowel looks appears to be um, slightly distended, but it's not dilated. I'd just like to look at the remainder of the bowel to see if there's any obstruction. Or... So the bowel appears to be fluid filled and distended. There's a mm -hmm. little bit of fat stranding. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this abnormal loop of bowel, which maybe it, it, it appears to be telescoping within, so it may represent an intersusception. So I'm mm -hmm. looking for any lesion within this bowel loop. There doesn't appear to be any enlarged surrounding lymph nodes and the, the, remaining of the, the remainder of the unprepared bowel appears to be normal. The solid abdominal visceral organs also appear to be normal. Okay, so to summarize, there's an abnormal uh, loop of bowel which is thickened, uh, but not obstructed in the, uh, behind the bladder. Um, there's also bilateral hydronephrosis and no apparent cause is identified on this, uh, CT. Given that it's bilateral hydronephrosis, I'm concerned about the pelvic mass causing obstruction. So my management would include doing a CT urinogram with a contrast to see if there's any luminal filling defects. I would also um, raise the possibility, possibility of a small bowel pathology in this uh, abnormal bowel. Um, differentials can include lymphoma, um, as the more, most likely differentials I would discuss in the uh, GIMDT. I'd also discuss with the urologist because they have bilateral high pressure hydronephrosis, so they may need to have an apostomy. Uh, thanks for doing this. Again, I'm going to give you a clear criticism, but I'm going to ask you to show me the hydronephrosis, please. Okay, yep. so this is, do you think this hydronephrosis? It looks like hydronephrosis to me. The pelvis looks okay. like... What is, what is your definition of hydronephrosis, please? So um, if the pelvis, the, the, pelv the proximal ureter and the pelvis, if it's dilated, um, usually more than 1.1 centimeter, 1.5 centimeters. Okay, you said uh, pelvis and proximal ureter. 
is dilated. This defines head and phrosis. Are you sure about this? No, just the kidney, not the not the ureter. Okay, so the kidney. And yeah. you said then one centimeter or one point five centimeter. Which one of them? Because it can't be this big difference. Um, I don't know the exact measurement. What else do you look in the kidney to confirm that this is hydronephrosis? So you can look to see if there's any fat stranding around the kidney. No, no, inside the kidney. Inside the kidney. Um, so what, is, what, what do we call hydronephrosis? What? Uh, caliceal dilatation and... Obs um, caliceal dilatation only? And, and of the pelvis and the renal, the renal pelvis and caliceals. Okay, so it's pelvic caliceal dilatation, right? Yeah. Are we agree on this? Yeah. The, we, you oh. said the definition, or we agreed the definition is pelvic caliceal dilatation. Okay. And now you said there is no caliceal dilatation. Can you call this hydronephrosis? Uh, no. So it's a prominent renal pelvis, and it's extra renal pelvis and stops at the pelvic junction bilaterally. So what do we call this? Extra renal pelvis? Yes, with? PUJ obstruction maybe or something? Yeah, narrowing. It's not obstructed because there's no sign of obstruction. It's just narrowing. So I wouldn't call this hydronephrosis because you haven't got caliceal dilatation. So the second thing here you said about this abnormality there. I think if you use coronal, it would have helped you to uh, nail this case uh, in defining the kidney and in defining the, this abnormality. So what, what are you calling this abnormality there? This is intersusception. Perfect. So in intersusception in adults, what do we look for? So you're looking for a mass and I think there's a lipoma or something. Uh, excellent. Well done. Perfect. So you got it. And what made you got it is the coronal. So this is a lesson um, that you need to remember, really. Try to use all the reconstructions that is provided for you. It's there for you to use. Mm -hmm. Your line is cutting off, but I will tell you what exactly this is. So again, this is a, a fat lesion or fat-like lesion. I, you say in my usual practice, I'll measure the density. And if this is fat, then this will be a lipoma. I can see that this has a got a very long pedicle going up all the way, measures about seven centimeters. As we said previously, you will always try and mention the size of the abnormality. So this is like three by two centimeter with a very large and long stalk. Um, this is probably the lead leading the intersusception. I can see a thickening there, which could be partially explained by the intersusception. However, I would like to perform a CT scan with contrast just to exclude that there's nothing else going in this area. I also have to know that there's a bit of dilatation of the proximal small bowel measuring up to 3.5 centimeter, which means that this is causing an element of obstruction. It's not a complete obstruction, but I would now contact the surgical registrar on call and inform him about the case, about this intersusception with possible uh, partial obstruction of this case. Um, and this is how I would do. I hope you enjoyed this viable session. Please make sure that you read on the three following topics. The first one is hydronephrosis, definition and interpretation, pelvic junction obstruction, and intersusception for adults and children. This will help you to maximize the learning of this video and will help you to not to fall into the same mistakes that your colleague has fallen into during this Viva session. Please make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get my next Viva videos and teaching videos to help you to pass the FRCR examination from the first time and with the highest score possible. And thank you.